privilege to, to represent University of Texas. My name is Mike Yurisich. I'm the quarterback coach, offensive coordinator. I was hired on this past January. I uh, come from Ohio State last year before that. I was at Oklahoma State for a while, six years there, and then came from a small uh, college, uh, Shippensburg University of Pennsylvania. Before that, I was offense coordinator there for two years and coached Division II ball for, for eight years uh, before I arrived at Oklahoma State. And uh, very fortunate to be in this profession, wonderful profession that it is, and uh, more honored to, to be here in front of you today. I know how tremendous uh, Texas is from a from a high school developmental uh, talent, everything. And, uh, you know, on behalf of Coach Herman and the staff, um, we thank you for your support and uh, anything that we can do. We want to we want to make sure that we're extending ourselves. And uh, Coach Herman wanted to make it a point this offseason with the COVID stuff uh, that we extend ourselves to you guys and and uh, really open it up. At the end, that's probably what I'm looking forward to the most is is the questions because then I'll be able to, to maybe ask you some things. And um, I love going around and learning from you guys. And like I said, I, I coached uh, a lot of different places and there's good coaches everywhere. I know that. And so uh, very humbled to be in front of you today. Thank you for your time. Today we'll be talking about uh, the intermediate drop back pass game. Um, I'm going to go through some things um, that I think will help you for the coordinators out there, uh, just from a structural standpoint, some things that, that may be um, good for you to hear. Uh, from an organizational standpoint, from a structural standpoint, kind of broad strokes. And then there's some, some things that I try to do from a quarterback standpoint, uh, from my teaching, um, my philosophy, and that I just think that'll help. I, I just think there's some information that I, I, I sit and I, I think of these clinic talks. I'm like, okay, what would, I, what would I want to hear? What would I want to try to get? So I try to gear it towards that and not just be all X's and O's. At the same time, I know you want ball. Um, I know you want some film, so we'll try to get into it. And uh, any questions that you have, uh, hit me up and uh, ask Tori for, for whatever information. She'll relay that to me, and I'll get it to you. With that being said, let me share my screen here. I'm on two different devices, so I can show film, and then I can uh, draw a little bit in chalkboard. So what I do is I use – everybody's been asking me, Whenever I get on these Zoom meetings, everybody asks me what program I'm on. So what I do is I don't I, I, I downloaded a Good Notes application and I put that on my iPad. And so on my laptop, I'm able to show video. And then I log in on two devices, my laptop and then my iPad. And the iPad has the Good Notes on it. And I got a, a, a stencil, uh, which will show the O-line and the hashes and everything like that that I draw on. It makes it real convenient for meetings. I suggest you go to, to Good Notes, and then if you need the stencil, um, email Tori. Tori, are you going to provide your, your email? Or, and All I, right, I, for, I, the, for the – like to record it? Well, I guess here's what I'll do. Um, just my email is this. Or, yeah, they can – I've got all their emails, so I can include it with what I send out. Just email me. And any email that I get, just say that you were on the COVID. That's Yurcich, Y-U-R-C-I-C-H, at utexas.edu. It doesn't have to be caps. So my last name, at utexas.edu. Um, and then send me an email just saying you were on this clinic. The, just call it 428 Clinic. I'll know that you were on here. And then I'll send you the stencil I have if you want it, whatever. And then you guys get to record this, so you're, you're all good. So pass game notes, okay? Some pass game notes for us. Um, <clears throat> this, this first one here, um, have, a, have a beater's menu. I found that this is very helpful um, for, for many reasons. It's really helpful as you're game planning. Um, it helps cut through all the discussions that you may have, and it helps slap your own wrist when you're starting a pencil too much and you're starting to maybe get a little bit too cute. It's also very helpful when you're up in the press box and you just need a reminder. Uh, maybe you have an assistant up there that can tell you, hey, you know what? Uh, we should think about this or that because they're giving us a lot of a specific coverage. And even though you haven't maybe particularly schemed that or game planned um, against that particular coverage, maybe it's a new coverage. We see a lot of new coverages every week. 
every week somebody's trying to scheme us. So being able to refer to a beater's menu is very helpful. And so I put together, you know, just a simple example, um, a simple example of, of what it may look like. And, and, and really, you'd like it to be very minimal. And so as you go into the game plan, you can say, okay, for this week, we're, we're going we're gonna to rep, you know, rub and pick. And then we need a couple cover two beaters, uh, smash and, and vert with the shallow and then three and then so on and so forth. I think it's very important each week to understand what your cover zero beaters are each week. I think that's critical because you never know. Oh, they haven't shown us any cover zero. When you go to a game plan with no cover zero beaters, well, guess what? He may dial it up on fourth and six for the game. And you want an answer. Uh, you want to have your kids prepared. So to me, we always want to have beaters and that will help you minimize any panic or any, it'll just help expedite the process of you calling plays and, and get into good plays that your kids know that they've repped and you're not drawing shit up in the dirt. Um, again, bear beaters every week, you got to have bear beaters. Well, they haven't shown us any bear. Well, and you never know. <laughs> they can pop in bear, have a contingency plan, at least have it on the menu. And when you can dial it up on the sideline, your, your players understand. And we really, we don't need four. I, a lot of these lists show four or five different ways to beat cover one. For example, I got four plays. You don't really need four. You need two. Uh, maybe you need one, right? And you just need answers. And I think that having a menu helps within game plans, knowing your schemes, knowing what beats uh, certain coverages, obviously. And you want as much carryover as you can. So, like, for us, you know, why cross? It's good versus two. It's good versus zone blitz. It's good versus cover four with the post tag, um, and so on and so forth. So as many rollovers as, as possible, those plays add value. Those concepts add value. But I just thought that was interesting, that something I'd, I'd share with you. I think players learn best. Okay, I think players learn best by the second bullet here. Okay, they learn best by concepts and reps. The more we can conceptually build our offense um, and teach from that and give rhyme and reason to our system so that it's easily comprehensible and our players know when we say something, what that means. It falls into a category. I think that's very important to do when you're building an offense, when you're building a drop back system or anything that, that you're, you're conceptually trying to build it. And then – Find ways. There's a lot of there's a lot of categories. There's a lot of words in a dictionary that you can use. Um, I constantly Google and use the thesaurus and you know synonyms, and it's amazing uh, the resources that are available to us for the English language to look up certain things and to be able to categorize things. Because I think learning, you know, is is very important. And everybody can say in that meeting room, we've all been there where it's like, okay, we can call it shit sandwich for all we care. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, that's true. But I'd rather call it something where our guys can conceptually understand it and learn it to where when you say the word, ah, it makes sense, whatever that is. And it's specific to your system. You can't just ask me, well, coach, give me some of your, your concepts. And, you know, yes, you, you could do that, but it's best if you, if you make your own up. Because um, most of us right now are in a time where we don't want to reinvent the wheel. We have to adapt and we have to incorporate and we're trying to teach and, and go through these meetings without necessarily having these kids in person. So a lot of this stuff's already in. This is past spring ball already. So we got to be ready to fire. So just be creative in how you come up with your concepts. And then obviously repetition, right? Um, but another example for us of, of concepts would be this grid whether they be verticals, whether they be isolations, whether they be crossers. So, for example, verticals. Like, verticals isn't verticals for us. Verticals could be any V word, just for an example. Any V word is, is a vertical, like Veronica. Vera, that could be another vertical play. Anything like that, isolation would be any X tag, or it could be any Z tag. Crossers could be any biblical name, right? The cross, whether it be Moses, David, anything relative to that. You can build your themes on and on and on. Floods, any river, 
is a flood. All your systems and then your tempo is off of that. I think it's very important to build those concepts and keep those things within those concepts so that you're not having a system of a different lot of other, why, why do we call it this? Well, that's just what we named it. I don't think that's a good reason. I don't think that's good teaching because what you're doing when you're, when you're teaching like that, to me, you're occupying brain space. Players only have so much they can handle up in their brain. And when you enter something new, something else usually gets deleted or dulled or dulled. That's very important. So although, yes, it's one more thing. It's only, it's only one concept. How many times you hear that? You mean, well, it's only, it's only one thing that they have to learn. Well, that one thing is probably taken away from just focus on a base concept that they already know that it's just going to be dulled now. And they're not going to be a plus at that focus wise. It's time, it's reps, energy. <clears throat> I heard this from Tim Hinton when I was back when I was coaching at Edinburgh, Pennsylvania Division II school back in like 2005. I went to go see Tim Hinton play. Tim Hinton's over at Ohio State, very good coach. And he said this, and it, it, it stuck with me forever. And I'm, I'm guilty of this. That's why, that's, that's, that's why I bring it up. But, you know, this is an important one. Ask more questions and present less information. Ask more questions, present less information. That is so good, man. And I know when we're installing, that's hard to do. Okay. That's hard to do because you've got to make sure that you're giving them the information. You got to make sure it's taught right. You got to make sure that they're taking their notes. But when it's all in, right? And as much as you can, go back and ask them questions in the install of what we just put in. Have them teach it to you. Ask them questions. Why? Where are your eyes? Tell me about your feet. What are you seeing here? Why did you make this throw? I mean, you you would. Be shy. I ask so many questions. When we're in a normal meeting, when everything's installed and we're game planning and we're reviewing Tuesday's practice, it's constant questions. What, what were you thinking is, is like the number one thing I'll ask the quarterback. And, and I know a lot of you do the same thing, so I'm sorry if this sounds elementary, but I think it's so important that, you know, if he makes an errant decision, like just makes a really poor decision, all right, I won't like start ripping them because the first thing I want to know is why he did what he did. Did I screw him up? Did I give him the wrong information? I want to learn how, you know, he got to the point. It's not that he did it. It's okay. What can I control? So why did, where were your eyes? What made you come to this decision? And if you ever hear the, the, the quarterback say, well, I, I don't know. <laughs> That's not acceptable. I don't know is not acceptable. There has to be a reason. And maybe quarterbacks, when you initially get into them, they won't provide you the feedback immediately. But I remember going back through, this is, this is an example. I remember going back through a seven-on-seven seven script with a summer, in a summer workout. And I had the script, and I was home, and I could not watch the workout, right? Because we, we can't observe in the summer back in the day. So um, let me share this again here. Every, every two minutes, it'll, it'll boot me out unless I touch it. So I got to remember to touch it. Um, so I had the seven and seven script in my hand. And I remember we were, I was at Oklahoma State. I asked J.W. Walsh, who's with us now. I, I asked J.W. I said, okay, I went through the plays. We had about 20 plays. And I said, what would you do on, on trail X post? Um, I, can't, I can't really remember. What do you mean you can't remember? I, I don't remember what I did. Okay, well, what'd you do on 91H? I, again, I can't remember. So I, I, you know, why can't you remember? Oh my gosh, like, what, what are you talking about? So the next time we did it, I asked him the same thing. And then he got it. He was able to recall. Very important that your quarterbacks are able to take those reps and then revisit those mentally, whether it be right after the rep, whether it be right after the series, it's recall. You have to be able to take that mental rep, learn from it, don't dwell on it, obviously, but we need that input. We need to focus on that input. And then after the practice, you should be able to go back through it and think about it again. Why was that? And then be able to, in the next day, have a conversation. So from that point forward, Jay was squared away. All of our quarterbacks could give me exactly what they did and why they did it. And I didn't even need to watch practice. That's the information sharing that needs to have happen on every practice, on every rep. So it, it is always like a discussion. These are football discussions. It's not like, okay, you need to do this, this, and this. 
there's a point for that. There's a, there's a time for that. But for the most part, we have to understand that how they're learning, how they're thinking, so we can adjust our coaching style to that individual because they're all different. They're all different. They all process the information differently. So we have to adapt our coaching the way we analyze how they learn. We got to be able to adapt into that. Okay. I believe that's the way uh, you should be able to coach the quarterback any position. Okay. Moving on to, to uh, concepts. Okay. So if we can, from a goal standpoint, five dropbacks, because there's so much going on. There's so many RPOs. There's so many quicks. There's so many play actions. There's screens. We have all the pocket movement. We have all these categories, right? Let's go five concepts of drop back pass. And then let's find out week to week how many formations that we can go. I, I know that that's, that's nothing new, but we have to remind ourselves of that fact. We have to continually beat ourselves up over that fact. That's very important. <clears throat> quarterback must have a movement key every play. Who's your key? Where are your eyes? Every play, guys. Every play. It can't be, well, uh, you know, on this play, it's this week, and it's this, and it's – no, it's got to be – when we run Texan, our, our movement key is on the free safety. He's on the free safety, boundary safety. That's where our eyes are, okay? If we're running four verticals, we're keying whatever. Okay, there could be pre-step keys, there could be indicators. I'm all good with that. But but every time we snap the ball, we're keying a defender on every play. If you don't, and I've been there, man, if you don't have a movement key every play, then you are the reason his eyes will wander because you did not indoctrinate indoctrinate him on eye discipline. And that's on us as coaches. We can't expect him to be effective if we haven't told them exactly where to look when the ball is being snapped. Footwork must be consistent, okay? And, and obviously, you know, that's key, right? Back in the day when, when the gun was evolving, shotgun spread, you used to hear a lot of times quarterbacks have a tendency to wander in the pocket in the gun as opposed to going under center, five quick, five big, one hit stroke. There is some truth to that. There is some truth to that. So whatever your footwork is, and they're all good, okay? No matter whatever the quarterbacks learn, however they learn it, they're all good, right? They have a good platform. They can transfer their weight. It's all good. But they got to be consistent. They can't, okay, on one time they're shuffling, and on this time they cross over, and on this time, you know, there was no depth at all, just a subtle drop. It's got to be the same. It's got to be the same. Okay, if it's a multiple drop where there's quick on the left and a little bit more intermediate on the right, yeah, there's variance. Okay, there's variance. So the key there is, is the second part of that comment, be ready. Be ready, okay, which means this. If I had a quarterback error, okay, if he were to error, I would want him to err on being short and ready, then longer and late. I'll drop to six yards and be ready. But – I'd rather err there than going three big, and now the ball's a little bit late. And now I'm at seven and a half yards, but the ball's late, okay? Each quarterback should know what the drop takes, uh, what footwork, footwork he needs based on the routes given. So there is some variance. They, that might not – that may be the difference between high school and college. I've never coached in high school. So that could be the difference um, because our guys have different habits. They've been coached mostly in spread offenses until they were 18 years old and we get them. So I like to adapt my style and their footwork based on what's already muscle memory. Um, I think there's some hard and fast rules with footwork, but there is some leniency. <coughs> All right. Next thing that I want to talk about is uh, is buzzword dictionary. Buzzword, that's a long, long way to say just basically, you know, a terminology. We used to call it terminology page, right? But I like, you know, the more buzzwords you can have that you'll use consistently and the quarterbacks can know, I think that's just the, the better. So I just came up with an example, and, and 
I didn't want to make you guys fall asleep in this deal. So I didn't give you the whole thing, but I just threw a few things together. So our buzzword dictionary, again, you'll want to alphabetize it so that you can insert things and look up things. And it's great for coaches to share with coaches. Like I want my own line coach to give me a buzzword dictionary. So when I'm in the unit meeting in the platoon meeting with the offense, I can say the correct thing. I've been in three different offenses in the last three years. So there, there's going to be some cobwebs, but if I can study the buzzword dictionary, it helps coaches coach and it helps players learn. It's all about communication. So types of throws, for example, our one throw is a bullet throw. So when I say, Hey man, that curl, that's a bullet. That's the one throw rather. That's a one throw. He knows what that is. Two throw intermediate throw over a second level defender before a third level defender. Right. So like a, Y cross, for example, when I got a one inch to wheel linebacker. Okay, that's a two throw. I'll say two throw. I don't have to talk about all the words, right? So the first meeting we have, we'll go over definitions. So it's an intermediate throw over the second level defender before the free safety and cover three can make the play. That's what I'll tell them. But that's a two throw. From here on out, I'll say two throw until you graduate and they'll know what a two throw is. Three throw. What's that? High trajectory, stove pipe throw. Four throw, and I'm not going to read all through these, but I think these are these are helpful things that you can steal from me that have a place. Four throw is a pace it throw. What does that mean? It means I'm conscious of velocity, right? Pace it, screens, shallows, etc. Anything underneath, check downs. We want to pace it, right? We don't want to knock them over. We want to make a catchable throw. It's about location, right? It's about velocity. Okay, types of fakes. Well, what kind of fake do I use, Coach? Well, you, I've done it. Now I'm guilty. You get real wordy. Well, I want you to extend it with two hands, and on your second step, you take your left hand off of it, and then you put the ball into your third arm, your third hand in your belly, and then you get to four, four five, and six, and you're dropping. You hit your throat. No, it's a freaking one fake, right? Best sell. Typically, show and slide. So what's that? Show and slide. Show and slide, right? Well, two fake. That's a hard sell, but we're showing and going, okay? More on the naked, right? Well, we're showing it with one hand, and we're going. Show and go. Two fake. That's all I got to say. Three fake. What's a three fake? Flash fake. Abort versus blitz. Whatever. You adapt that to your own offense. Don't exactly, uh, you know, spell it out like I spelled it if it's a little bit different for, for what you run, okay? What's the boundary? And then it's alphabetized. What's cloud? Free access. What's a Leo Ray call? And then you have all these terms up and down of what you call stuff. And that's very helpful. Very helpful to do. Uh, define throws. We did that with the one throw, two throw, three throw, four throw, which is a pace of throw. Coverage ID. Very important. Three ways, really, we talk about. So, yes, it, you know, progression reads dominate, right? Progression reads dominate because you don't know, you know, the coverage every time it moves. And we don't have to, we don't have to guess on what the coverage is. We go one, two, three, four, is he open? I-H-O, right? So, but knowing the contour or knowing the coverage or having a good idea of what that will be helps us. So what I say is when we know the coverage, okay, you can, you can skip a couple chapters and read the cliff notes. You don't need to read the whole book. You know, skip chapter three, four, and go right, right to chapter eight and finish the book, right? Which means progressions, right? I don't have to go one, two, and then really go three and then four where I'm going over the backside on my cross when I know it's covered three rotation away. Okay, so having an idea of the contour, and some quarterbacks may like the word roof line, okay? But we say contour, which is what? Connect the Dots between corner safety, safety, and corner. Connecting the dots. If it's flat, it equals four or zero. If it's rounded, it equals two or two man. If it's inverted, it can equal cover three, cover six, which is quarter, quarter, half, or cover one, right? And you may have a little bit of nuance based on who you play and what you've seen. And But I think that's a really helpful tip to help those quarterbacks quickly cut through some coverages. Hey, it's a flat contour over here. You know, that should go into the – to the terminology page as well. Okay, I want to get into our first drop back of the day, and that's uh, Texan for us. So here's here's the uh, 
here's the grid that I've been drawing on. And a lot of guys are like, what's this program? It's just good notes application. And then the GA made this little PDF for me and I downloaded it. And then I got, I got put the left plays on the left hash and the right plays on the right hash. And I go about my business and a little grid down here to make some notes. So that's all that is. And then you can zoom out and in and it's pretty nifty deal. Okay. Makes our meetings pretty efficient when I can go back and forth between chalk talk and, and uh, the football. And so the film's a little choppy, you know, film's a little choppy and ain't great there. Okay. Texan for us is a three by one. Um, the concept for us would be uh, the X isolation. So this would be X isolation play is an isolation bucket or concept. Um, the base way that we'll run this play is three by one. What we're going to do with X is run him on a speed out. It will convert versus press. We, we, we can game plan that. We can keep it on. Depends on what type of press they're giving us. We can convert it versus press, but it definitely will convert versus cloud. The Y will have a, what we call a vertical wrap. He's working, you know, he wants to be over that right tackle area. Um, but his, his main goal is, is to wrap that hook curl defender in that zone. He wants to beat him with speed vertically and wrap inside that, that hook defender, strong side hook defender. Okay. So the field, we're going to run just a roll flat speed cut. To the field, we're going 10, we're going uh, five, and I drew that a little bit deep, I'm sorry, we're going 10 and four, and we're making that at 14. Just, we call that a curl for us. The tailback will check and he'll run an O route, which is five by one outside that tack. Okay, let's talk about each route a little bit more uh, in, in definitively, okay? So this, this speed cut, okay, by the X, um, Top of the numbers, okay, top of the numbers is our alignment. We're outside foot back, okay? We want to take six steps, six steps, and we want to roll this thing and run it with speed, okay? We want to roll into this thing, run it with speed, and, you know, there's going to be variance on the depths of each receiver, but the timing is all the same. Some guys will roll that all, all the way to about 13 to 14 on six steps. But at the end, if when we get good at this route, we're actually getting back downhill negative angle. Actually slightly coming back downhill on that cut. And that will help any undercut defender, you know, trying to get that, that corner right there, trying to get it a left hand on the ball. We're going to try to cut that angle off at the very end of that thing. Okay, and we're trying to throw that ball high and away. And I think I think there's a I think there's a misconception with the strength of, of, of the arm that the quarterback must have to throw a speed cut, especially a speed cut to the field. A lot of guys don't feel that that can happen. Um, the way we teach it is we want to throw the ball high and away, high and outside. Okay make the receiver run through the football. It's very important that we cut the ball loose on our third step. So we're a rhythm three drop, okay? When we're throwing a speed cut, we're one, two, three, plant, rip it. And that ball should be coming off our index finger before that X gets his head around. And it's all about timing. It's all about trust. It's all about reps. This has got to be an everyday route for you, okay? Now, when we bang this out, you don't, it's, it doesn't, okay, so this is one of those throws where it's a light one throw. What does that mean? It means I don't have to throw a bullet now. This doesn't have to be a seed. This has to be a ball that makes the receiver run, he has to run, make the receiver run through the ball, make him run through the ball. If you think about it, if you call this play, as I Right, boom, with my sixth step, right there, there's six. That ball is coming off my index finger. If I throw it high away, it's a race now at this point. It's a race to who can get to that point faster. And if that corner is high, 
I don't care if he's over top, high inside. We're running away. It's a race now. Just throw that ball with timing. Each quarterback, based on his arm strength, can judge where they need to put that ball. Guys with weaker arms put it all the way on the side because there's going to be more air under that throw. And the same thing to the field. To the field, we, you cut his split down to two yards outside the hash, and I, I'm talking about a different play now. We're not going to run this play FSL, although we could, and we have. But if you're throwing it to the field, you come all the way down to the hash or plus two outside the hash. We've even gone divide with it. Now, that's different with FBS arms at times. I get that part of it. But as long as that ball's thrown on time, hide away, make him run through the football. It doesn't need to be a one throw. Okay. Okay, other routes, okay. We're not going to try to, to use the wrap, the vertical wrap versus man. That's a zone beater. So he, we're not giving him too many rules. It's wrap the hook player. If it's man, we're not really worrying about him uncovering or staying on a move or anything like that. To hell with it. He's running a wrap. He's wrapping that hook defender, and uh, he's hooking up. Really want to space the field. He's got to be very conscious of where he is in, rel in, in relative spacing to that curl. Uh, into the boundary, must occupy that right tackle area, but more importantly, hook, control that hook defender strong. Okay? Um, to the field, just a speed cut here, self-explanatory there, okay? Um, and then this post curl, I want to talk about this for a second. So if, if we had a receiver that ran a 4-7, I had a bunch of guys that ran 4-7 and were damn good. If we run a 4-7, okay, well, you, you want to be 4-7 here, okay? Maybe it's 4-7-5. But when you plant that left foot and you stick it, you want to accelerate. If we can burst out of that cut, so many guys have a habit of decelerating to the post. If we can, when we, and even if it's body language and perception of a burst coming out of that thing and then finish at the top end, and I don't care if that breaks at nine yards, I don't care what that break is, I'll give a little leeway, but we need to burst that post. There needs to seem like a change of speed to get separation. Okay, we run so many posts in this offense, we're going to get that corner believing that we're running posts. And then when I come out of it, it's my face mask to the quarterback's face mask. It's not 14 to 12. I don't understand that. When people, guys, talk about curls, well, it's a 12 to 10-yard curl. Well, fuck, it's, excuse my language, it's, it's a 14 back to the ball. I don't care where, if he's late, you catch that thing at nine. Should never happen, quarterback. But that's the point. Keep on coming. Keep on coming. Okay, quarterback's read. I told you every snap, we have a, we have a movement key. Our movement key will be the free safety. Our movement key will be a free safety. If he rotates and plays cover three, cover one, um, three buzz, Right, it could be the, the hard one would be like a four solo where it's quarters and he's looking up number three. If he plays to the field, we play the out into the tail. Left. And again, guys, now I know there's a lot of different coverages that can take away that out, right? I get that, but we're, we're trying to keep it real simple. We're going one, two, base rule. Free safe does that, I play the bomb, okay. If he's pre-snap roll and he's one high and you got over rotation here to the field, well, go to the boundary. He's already there for you. It's beautiful. One, two. That would be a yes look. Yes. So, you know, from pre-snap standpoint, we, we say yes, no. Is it yes, no, pre-snap? If it's yes, that's where you're going right now. That would be yes. So yes is defined as, you know, for us, it's free access with no overhang. Free access, no over, and that's yes. If that safety's in a boundary, well, that's a no. So I got to key him. I got to key him post-snap. <clears throat> now, there's a lot of different things that we can tag on the backside of, of, of this particular play. We can tag corner routes. We can tag post-corner routes. We can tag quicker routes, like just stop routes at 10, good man routes, comebacks, whatever you want to do. That's why it's friendly. That's why it goes into the isolation category because it's a single receiver isolation. So based on the movement key, 
Let me just erase all this shit. One thing I left out is that what we'll do here is we'll chip. Now we have the ability to, to flip the protection. So for, for a base standpoint, we're, we're big here with the guard and the tackle. And then typically we're sliding to the field, whether it's to the Sam, to the Mike, whatever, based on game plan, based on any stack, whatever, okay? Now we can flip it and we can slide it to the boundary if the quarterback wants to, whatever he sees, and we're going to let him – do that based on the defensive structure. However, in a base look, when it's when it's tailback left and we're sliding right, we're creating, in essence, in a four down now, I'm talking about a four down, we're creating two double teams on both their defensive ends, which I think is is very friendly. I mean, who doesn't want to create a chip when you when you can't? So that's a nice little adjustment that we can make uh, based on game plan, based on who these creatures are. Okay, let's say free safety uh, plays half field into the boundary. Well, now I progression read, IHO, is he open to my wrap, to my vertical wrap? We want to get past the hook curl defender. What's the depth? Past the hook curl defender, usually around 10. Can go to 12 if you think you need a couple extra steps in there to get around them. If he holds, we now move on. And we isolate flat curl defender. So our eyes would set to the curl, and then we would reset to the flat. Okay? Three big footwork. If we know we're not going boundary, if we know it's no, if it's no, we're going three big, one hitch. Reset to your flat. Now, I think it's really important that we understand um, protections. Uh, and, and, and everybody's a little bit different. But there can be a circumstance okay, let's say we are on a uh, for whatever reason, we think this guy's more of a known rusher in the game plan on a 3-4 defense. And so we'd like to slide to him, okay? We'd like to slide to him. Well, if we do that and they simply rush four, and let's just say they add the mic, that means the tailback's got to come over, pick up the mic, Right, and they're just going to play cover three, and he's going to get underneath my out, and I now I've lost my tailback. This is a problem. We have to always understand where our problems are, right? So this is a problem defense against this play because the quarterback has now lost flat control. So his movement key, coach, you told me, movement key, one, two. Well, I lost two, and now I'm holding on to the ball, and now it's either incomplete – throw away, scramble or sack, right? Bad gig. Then you get in your ass ripped, right? Well, we've got to understand how to unfold a defense. We have to understand how to voice inflection, get these guys to move so, one, we can protect it, okay? But, two, if we're wrong, okay, if we're wrong and we lose our tailback, we got to, we got to understand that they're sliding to the known rusher this game plan or this particular look. All this being said to say this, Yes, this now still becomes one. If he hangs inside, we're flat curl to the field. We've got to get to the flat curl to the field because when we get face fire zone, so fire zone, we must understand where our flat control is. Where is flat control? Very important on this play. Huge. And there's more than just this scheme. Gentlemen, that, that this will show up. This is the hard part. This is the hard part. Again, don't put a play in unless you know the problems. This is one of the problems. 
right? Your movement key, key told you to go to boundary. You lost flat control because your tailback had to go pick up the mic because you were in a Leo to the, to the jack or a luck to the jack. And now is a rule breaker for the cue. He's got to know, hey, fire zone. I go to my flat control side. I got to know where my flat control is. And you got to drill the shit out of it, man. It's got to happen on the field a thousand times. That's the hard one. Obviously, if you were, you know, if you were into the boundary, or excuse me, if, if the if the slide was the other way, let's just say. Let's just say we were sliding the other way and we felt it was okay and we were okay putting the, the tail back on the jack if he were to come, but they bring the mic and we're protected, then the quarterback would be a-okay going one to two check down. And yes, I know the will can play that. I get it, but the quarterback's right there. I'm making his life easy. I'm making his life easy. <clears throat> Okay, I'd like to bounce to the film now and show you a couple clips of that. Sometimes I think I'm sharing and I'm not. Is this uh, showing us, Tori? Yes, sir. You've got the bubble. Okay, okay good. Okay, here we are in a three by one. We're in six man protection, should be sliding to the field. The same showing. Okay, so by definition, if this is field, field pressure, okay, technically we should now have our rule being this is one and then isolate flat curl. Now, if we know by game plan, they bring the SAM and still like to rush the defensive end, and that becomes nothing underneath that guy, I'm good. If we know our tailback's getting out because we are sliding this way and you want to, you feel good about the out, and if you don't like the out, you're going to check to your tailback, then I'm good. That's, you know, that's up to the quarterback, myself, and a lot of game study throughout the week, right? Got to know our opponent. So the, the key is right here on this six step out. So right here with the X, we don't, we do not want to lunge. You know, we don't want to lunge. We want to be balanced. In fact, we want that left foot there up top. We want that left foot under the left armpit. We don't want to be slamming it down with that left foot way outside of our framework because we don't have balance. And if you don't have balance, you can't transition your energy to the right. So, like, when I start talking about this route, I'm going to do, I'm going to do, uh, okay, here, here's, the, here's the ball inside over here. Look at this drawing, like Bob Ross, right? And then here's, here's, my, here's my receiver on the right side, and I'm going to run it out like this, okay? And there's a sideline. Here's the hash. Okay, I'm on the right side. I'm running out this way, okay? When we do the footwork, okay, that's our stance, okay? This is one. This is two. This is three, this is four, this is five, this is six, right? Now, where does seven go? Right here, seven for this guy, the way he is, seven's going to be about right there. And that sucks because he's stepping under himself, okay? That's going to be a really long way to go to get your head around and you're giving the corner a bunch of room to undercut that route, okay? If we can get seven, okay, as perpendicular to the line or to the sideline, so here's the sideline. If we can get seven as perpendicular as possible to that sideline, then it's going to really help us create and finish at that negative angle. One thing that may help you, we talk about a pressure step. One, two, three, four five, six, okay, on six. What that left foot should look like on six, okay, instead of having your foot straight up and down, 
okay? If you can angle six to where we just say toe it in, right? So I go five right there, six left foot. If I can toe that in, angle my toe in on six, that'll help seven become perpendicular to the, to the sideline, okay? That's a technique that's called a pressure step that may help you guys. So, like, when, we, when you teach this route, right, you jog through it. You jog through it. And then you three-quarter speed it, three-quarter speed it, three-quarter speed it. And then you full speed rep. It takes a lot of time. I'd like to see the curl break it closer to nine and then sell a burst. Now, we, uh, from a landmark standpoint, we want to get to a divide. A divide for us is splitting the hash and a number. We'd like to end up there at the top of our route at 14 yards. Divide at 14. So he's a little bit wide. This is early on. Okay, so he's a little bit wide. He's got cut down a little bit. Not too nitpicky with it, but in order to get a nice flat curl relationship and to get good route distribution, we need a guy there, a guy there, and a guy there. And again, we're going to bring our face mask back to the quarterback's face mask. Here we are. So ball's in the middle of the field. Movement key, free safety. Okay, he doesn't move. I'm going to go one, two, three. Very good. Make sure if the mic now, if the mic buzzes through there, we got to put this thing down there on time. He's got to come back downhill slightly against that strong safety in this mini coverage. I don't like the post curl here at all. Okay. Right there. Stick your foot in the ground here. Let's go accelerate. Sell the post. Your face mask, the quarterback's face mask. Mike's out of the box, good indicator. He's gonna stay put, either quarters or half, either way. I'm playing the field, three big, hitch, good. And then, you know, so we, we say three big hitch, or three big soft set. This would be a three big for me, three big, and he's just kind of soft setting there. Sometimes when you go three big and you hitch up, all your momentum now took you a full half yard into the line of scrimmage. One, two, three, that's more of a soft set, which I like. I like that. It, keep, it helps keep your depth. Okay, a little motion. Don't be afraid to use motion in your offense, man. If you're not going fast, motion. I need some coverages. So what, what are they doing on third and long? They're faking sugar, sugar feet, right? So here comes, looks like blitz. Is it blitz? Probably not. Probably not. Is this a man pressure or zone pressure? Well, I don't know what they did all week on film. If they showed this and, and dropped out into his zone, and then they showed this came and then played man, well, I know they're gonna they're gonna bluff us, right? All good. Okay, free safety movement key right here. Here he is. He does that. I go out to tailback unless it's zone pressure. He plays half field or looks to bracket in any way, this single receiver, I'm off of it and I'm one, two, three. No break, this is easy, easy money here. Instead of field. Boom, get it to him. Ball should be thrown in the arrow. Right there, right? Obviously. Uh, the, the, the rap busts here. He should, he should control 22. Okay, three by one again. Movement key. Okay, so we're, we're, facing, we're facing pressure here. So if we slide to it, we're okay. We'll get the tailback out to control him. 
So if you slide to it up top, you can go up top. I'm good. If you lose your back here, this guy's going to get underneath your out or could help. You know, if he's outside leverage, that's a rough gig. So if you lose flat control here, this is where I'd rather just throw this free access curl. I mean, if it was press, I'd be worried, but it's free access. Okay, so we luck it. So we slide four for four. We're good. We're picked up. Okay, let's talk about well, let's talk about rhythm three or plant throws to the left. Okay, very important. So I'm gonna try my drawing skills out again here, boys. I hope I'm not <laughs> killing y'all. But uh, all right. So I heard Matt Canada back in the day. I GA when I was a GA. He was a quarterback coach in Indiana. I think highly of Matt. But uh, he's now he's now with the Steelers, quarterback coach there. But I learned a lot from him. And he used to say, "Turn the mound." Okay, turn them out. So what that meant was if, and I beg your pardon, if that's home plate, oh, look at that. I got a nice mound right there, two-point mark. I didn't even mean to do that. So here we go. So there, there's the mound. I'm pushing off, right? I'm throwing a strike down the plate. That's my mound, okay? So when we want to throw the ball to the left on a plant throw, we want to turn the mound, right? So I want that mound to be there so I can drive to my home plate, which is now over there. We're throwing the out. So I have to turn the mound. Now, what will help you turn the mound is slightly stepping closer to 5 o'clock with your reach step, closer to 5 than 6. If I step at 6, my next step, I'm, I'm, I'm closing my hips to my throwing lane, right? So if I open a slightly closer to 5, right, and then my second step, helps turn as I cross over, I actually turn that foot to where I'm now turning the mound. My third step, I've now turned the mound completely and I don't even have to swing the gate open. I know that there's guys that go, you know, reach, kick, you know, with the kick, or I, I can't remember what it is. It's, it's reach, reach, cross over and then kick or whatever. But when you're doing that drop, and I'm not saying I know what's going on, is my opinion when you're when you do the kick and your plant throw is is or your plant step is here you're swinging the gate open that left foot has to plant exactly where you want it to be and maybe on outs you can memorize where that where that plant throw has to be but in my opinion when you're kicking in any in breaker like a glance now now you're dealing with two different angles and it, to me it's hard that way to me it's hard i'd rather build the mound that's just my opinion I could be wrong so I'd like to see uh, seven here step more five and help himself by building the mound throwing to his left now a rhythm three throw to your right now you can actually you can reach at six okay throwing to the right you can reach at six and then your crossover can actually be a little bit in front you're still crossing over and then three can be a little bit more to the right. So I'm actually building a little bit of an arc, a slight roll, if you will, throwing to the right. And all that's doing is shortening the throwing point and gaining a little bit of momentum into your throw. Righties like that, a little bit of a slight arc. I'm not talking much now. You're probably to the right guard's inside hip by the time you're throwing it, but that can help. Okay, I'm going to skip that one. I'm going to skip that one. Okay. I want to talk about one thing. How much time do I have here, Tori? Sorry. Um, about seven minutes. All right. I'd like to end on this. <clears throat> now, outs, okay, mirrored concept. Let me flip back and draw up a mirrored concept. Okay. So when we run a mirrored concept, am I showing my screen? Good. Okay, we can call it several different ways. 
Okay, it really doesn't matter. Let's just say we're on speed out. All right, just a mirror route right here, okay? So there's three things we talked to the quarterbacks about, okay? Three things. Three characteristics we're looking for. We're looking for, one, where's the cushion at? Where's the leverage at? And matchup. Those are three things that we want to think about as we're going mirror concept right here on double outs, okay? So cushion, matchup, leverage. Cushion, matchup, leverage. If it looks like free safety's down a little bit, inverted, right, and the corner's playing the post with inside leverage, and I got more of a palms look to the field where they may be playing three over two here, right? Well, again, contour, right? So connect the dots. It's more rounded to the field, and it's flatter or inverted into the boundary. Well, surely, I would like to think out into the boundary. Okay? And that's one example there. If I got flat straight across, By game plan, right? Corner's probably gonna be slightly outside with that type of split. All right, I got flat straight across. Well, now everything's equal, or is it? I'd say everything's equal, but systematically, okay? If we know that they're a quarters team going into this thing, if, they're, if they are able to, if they're able to, you know, if they're able to spin down and play that on a snap, well, I know that I'm a little bit more protected to the field because I have a vertical. So even if they play quarters, right, my vertical is going to help protect this out throw to the field. And I know you may be saying, we ain't going to throw a freaking out to the field. You know, bear with me. You might, all right? Because you don't need a rocket arm. I did this with a bunch of Division II guys, walk-on Division II guys that I, I've seen a bunch of <laughs> in this state. Shoot. All right? So where is my vertical? You have, the quarterback has to understand where's my vertical, especially in rotation away. And I know as a general rule, we want to go away from rotation. Okay. But the vertical will help pin down that flat curl player. He's got to get hands on him uh, um, or run four verts up there, you know, up, uh, up the hashes and that sort of thing. Okay. So and that being said, one away from rotation, of course, that's a golden rule on this play. No doubt. Okay. Two, if you're going to err, everything's equal. I got free access on both sides. I like my leverage on both sides. Go to the vertical side because that vertical will help build, uh, pin down the overhang player. Okay? When in doubt, when in doubt, quarterback, if it's rounded at all on both sides or press and you don't like your leverage, you don't like your matchup, right? We simply want to peak the middle read as one, check down two tailback three, and work our triangle read right here, whether he runs the middle read or he takes that thing to green grass and middle field open, we want to get to our triangle read as fast as we can, okay? Now, with that being said, I want to go back to, uh, I want to go back to a little bit of, uh, of, of football here on the, on the uh, video because I want to talk about a drop that can maybe help you. There's something that I want to just give you it may help, especially high school quarterbacks. So stop screen sharing, yes. Back to where I was. Let me get you down here. Now, this, the, the part that sucks is this is a different – the example I have to give you is from 
a different life, okay? And I don't want to do that, but I want to give you guys what you need. Is my, is my sh screen sharing? Uh, yes, sir, you're good. Okay, so now if you notice, okay, if, if, if this is something you want to go down, this is an option for you. Whether you have the arguments, um, call me, we can talk about it, all right? So you can see this quarterback's left foot up, right foot back, okay? So now when he throws a speed cut, he's going to actually hitch into it, and his hitch is the same timing as is a plant throw, and that's the key, right? We don't want to throw, you know, with, with the left foot back. We don't want to shuffle and then hitch into or out, okay, because then we'll be late, okay? But with our left foot up, we can go left, right. We call it a long two. Left, right, <clears throat> excuse me, left, right, and then we can hitch to our out. Really easy throwing left. A little bit harder throwing right because you got to get your ankle eye pointed all the way out to the right side to the field. But just check it out and contemplate if this is something that you want to do. I just, I just felt like this might be helpful. Left, right, hitch into it. Looks pretty damn easy, I think. Left, right, and hitch. And now, so now you're hitching. So the quarterback has more momentum. So I think guys with lesser arms can get away with field throws. If, if you have that, if you want to go down this road, you know, we can talk about other drops, you know, to different routes to help marry it up so you're not, so you're not scrambling. Now, the other nice part is, if you do convert your out to fade, left, right, plant throw, boom, boom, plant throw, and now you're throwing your fade. So you don't have to dick around with too many multiple drops. You can still just roll that over. All right? Again, left, right, hitch, better from the end zone. Uh, one second. Apologize. Again, to the right, left, right. Ball. Left, right, hitch, ball. And then the stamp film so choppy. That's why I wanted to spend so much time on the chalk talk. So again, throw it to the right, it's left, right. Hitch ball. Sorry to film so choppy, but it is what it is. That's it for me. Um, let me stop this share so I can see you guys. I appreciate all you guys. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email me, and uh, I'll respond with you. If I don't respond right away, just be patient with me. I'm probably doing something and caught up. And uh, – I will uh, get back with you as, as soon as possible. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for what you do. Stay safe. So and welcome. Welcome. Yeah. We good? Yep, I'm going to end it. Bye, guys. Thank you all for everything. I'll get these out tomorrow.